Hello everybody. Uh, today I am starting the lecture 3 of module 5. In module 5 I was discussing about the transverse vibration of the beam and in that connection I have discussed the frequency equation that can be obtained for different this boundary conditions and boundary conditions are actually the classical boundary condition that I have discussed. Now in this lecture I want to emphasize on some problems where you can come across a non-classical boundary condition. So with the help of non-classical boundary condition let us see how we can obtain the frequency equation and natural frequencies of the beam and of course we will be uh, delivering the lecture, I will be delivering the lecture only for Euler Bernoulli beam. So far the other beams, this Rayleigh beam and Timoshenko beam and shear model, these three types of models I have not discussed. So natural frequencies and mode shapes of the beam with non-classical boundary condition. Non-classical boundary conditions may happen in many practical problems such as a beam carrying a concentrated mass or lump mass. Actually the beam is a distributed parameter system. For example, you take a case of uh, aircraft wing. Aircraft wing is a slender structure may be modeled as a cantilever beam. But at the tip of the wing, you can see a fuel tank is attached. So in that case this uh, aircraft wing which was modeled as a cantilever beam has no free boundary condition at the tip. At the tip fuel tank exists so therefore the special consideration have to be taken to determine the natural frequencies. There is a bridge girder for example and bridge girder is resting on a elastic pad that is uh, elastomeric bearing nowadays called. So in that case the model may be a spring, spring attached to the end of a beam. Gardar is modeled as a beam and the spring is attached to one end of the beam or maybe at the two ends of the beam. So this type of conditions are met in the practical uh, applications and we can model this, uh, this type of condition or situation with the help of continuous formulation. Then I will discuss how to analyze a free damp transverse vibration of the beam. Now here I will take the damping into the equation of motion and with the certain assumption of damping we will be able to decouple the equation of motion and go forward for finding the response of the system subjected to initial conditions. Okay. Now let us see one such case of non-classical boundary condition that is a beam, one end is fixed and other end is there is a lump mass at the other end. Okay. So other end you cannot completely take it free because the, the reaction of the mass, concentrated mass will act there as a inertia force. So uh, this type of model that is idealized beam with a lump mass at the tip can be a model of aircraft wing because the aircraft wing can be considered as a cantilever beam and a fuel tank that is having a mass of considerable magnitude is attached at the free end. Okay. Now, let us for example uh, take the mass of the beam is uniform throughout the length, E is the Young modulus of elasticity and I is the moment of inertia of the cross section, okay. L is the length of the beam. Now here one important parameter that is mass ratio will play an important role in natural frequency. So this alpha is denoted as capital M divided by small m into L. Small m into L 
is the total mass of the beam capital M is the lump mass. So here you can see that ML if the mass is uniformly distributed it is total mass of the beam and M is the lump mass. Now here I have shown the lump mass at the phi n so that boundary condition is applied. In other problem I will show that mass may be elsewhere located. So in that case the formulation will be of different nature. Now let us formulate this as a boundary value problem. So at x is equal to 0 because this is the fixed end, this end is fixed as a cantilever. So at this end naturally the displacement and slope must be 0, there is no doubt if the fixity is perfect. So we are getting at x is equal to 0, y bracket 0 t equal to 0 and dy by dx is the slope of the deflected shape is uh, 0 at, uh, uh, at the location x is equal to 0. If I take this is the reference station. So this is the reference station and we are measuring x from this. Okay. Then x is equal to L. Here we take the bending moment as a free end the bending moment is 0 E i del square y by del x square and L t at x is equal to L is 0. So that is actually physically it is bending moment. is equated to 0. However, if it is completely free in absence of lump mass then the free end should have also 0 shear condition. But because of lump mass reaction, inertial reaction, so inertial reaction of the lump mass is mass into acceleration measured at x is equal to L. So minus m del square y by del t square at l t, this is the inertial reaction, should be equal to the beam shear. So beam shear is E i d cube y l t divided by d x cube. That means beam shear, beam shear at x is equal to l is equal to physically it is equal to the inertial reaction of lump mass at x is equal to L. So this is the uh, these are the prominent boundary condition and this will be, uh, when you apply this the constant of integration of this uh, solution of the homogeneous equation can be found and from that uh, um, this frequency equation can be uh, obtain and solving the frequency equation we will be able to find the natural frequencies. Okay. Now as we know that uh, mode shape function for freely vibrating beam phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x. So this expression that I am writing here is actually nothing but the solution of this differential equation, solution of this fourth order differential equation. Homogeneous equation. From that equation, this result, solution of that equation, these results come, okay. Where phi is the mode shape function, so that the response now y x t is nothing but phi x into a generalized coordinate eta t and for free vibration we assumed we assume eta t is a harmonic so it, it can be assumed like that say harmonic function in absence of damping there is no phase difference so we assume 
eta t is equal to a sin omega t where a is the unknown magnitude. Now let us apply the boundary condition one by one. First let us apply the boundary condition at x is equal to 0. x is equal to 0 boundary condition is if this end is fixed and this is our cantilever and this is the lump mass m. So at x is equal to x is measured from here this distance is l. At x is equal to 0 deflection is 0 and x is equal to l the slope is 0. So putting x is equal to 0 here we will get a1 plus a3 equal to 0 that is obvious because cos hyperbolic 0 is 1 whereas sin hyperbolic 0 is 0 cos lambda x cos hyperbolic here cos lambda 0 that is cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. So therefore we get a1 plus a3 equal to 0. So that gives a1 equal to minus a3. So a relationship is obtained between a1 and a3. Similarly, uh, applying the boundary condition for slope. Slope is what? Slope is the first derivative of the deflected shape. So if I take first derivative with respect to x space derivative, then I am getting a1 lambda sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 lambda cos hyperbolic lambda x minus a3 lambda sin lambda x plus a4 lambda cos lambda x ok. So apply now boundary condition for slope. Boundary condition for slope if you apply this phi prime phi dash 0 that is d phi by dx d phi by that is will be ordinary derivative total derivative d phi by dx equal to 0. So in that condition we are getting a2 plus a4 equal to 0 that gives a2 equal to 0 minus a4. So we can reduce this equation in terms of two constants. So I can now write the solution here because a1 equal to minus a3 so I can write cos a1 into cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus a2 a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x. So you can see from uh, two constant now we have got uh, from four constant now we got equation with two constants ok two constants can be now evaluated or a homogeneous equation algebraic equation can be found after putting the boundary condition at x is equal to l two condition we must get so one condition is that bending moment is zero so ei del square y by del x square equal to ei phi double prime evaluated at x is equal to L should be equated to 0 because at the free end we have taken bending moment equal to 0. Therefore, we have obtained the second derivative as well as third derivative. Third derivative is needed to apply the shear condition at the end where the mass is placed because the inertial reaction of the mass should be balanced by the beam shear. So, therefore, after taking the second derivative of that equation, we now get lambda square a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x then plus a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x. Then we are obtaining another derivative for shear. Okay. Now let us first apply the bending moment condition that is ei del square y lt divided by del x square equal to ei phi double prime evaluated at x is equal to l equal to 0. So therefore if I substitute this I am getting a1 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l equal to 0 because 
right hand side is 0 so lambda square can be cancelled that means we can divide both sides of the equation by lambda square because lambda is non-zero so we are getting one equation okay. so that equation have to be used in conjunction with the equation that have to be obtained applying the shear boundary condition now shear boundary condition at fixed end is not zero that is the bin shear at the free end must be equal to the inertial reaction at the free end now inertial reaction is due to this concentrated mass or lump mass so therefore we get ei del q y lt by del x cube equal to minus m del square y by del t square to be evaluated at x is equal to l now take as we have taken y x t is nothing but your phi x and some time function so applying this equation here we now arrive at ei phi triple prime that is the third derivative of phi to be evaluated at x is equal to l equal to omega square because after second derivative minus omega square term will come so minus minus it will be plus omega square m phi to be evaluated at x is equal to l now let us use this factor m by ml equal to alpha that is the mass ratio that factor will evaluate or uh, help us uh, to interpret the result in various ways okay now substituting this equation that is derivative we have obtained earlier and now we will utilize this derivative to obtain this so actually if i see this equation ei phi triple prime evaluated at x is equal to l so if i divide both sides by ei that means keeping this phi triple prime at x is equal to l that is to be evaluated is equal to omega square m ei phi evaluated at x is equal to l okay now we know that omega square m can be written as lambda so that we have found it but now if we use this omega square m by ei as lambda to the power 4 okay then uh, actually this uh, uh, here if we see the beam equation previously then here we can see that ei d4 phi by dx4 equal to m omega square into phi small m note that it is small m so del square phi by del x4 equal to m omega square by ei phi now this parameter was taken as lambda to the power 4 in this equation okay now this omega square here omega square we are getting omega square can be now converted into this form and bring multiplying a uh, this side by l both sides by l then you are getting alpha omega square m divided by ei into l phi so l i have used additionally in this equation okay so this quantity if you see this is nothing but your lambda to the power 4 so we are now getting phi triple prime at x is equal to l equal to alpha lambda to the power 4 l phi x equal to 0 so that equation we are now getting so here frequency parameter that is lambda to the power 4 is coming here because our target is to determine the lambda frequency parameter from which we can uh, come physically to the natural frequency lambda is the root of this frequency equation that we will get 
in the later case after applying this boundary condition. So, we are now getting this condition phi triple prime that is coming from shear and alpha omega square m by E i, L I have used it ok phi so that the equation remains balanced ok. So, in that case uh, this omega square m by E i can be substituted by lambda to the power 4 and then if I use this third derivative that lambda cube term will come and this is the third derivative term here in the left hand side that is the third derivative of phi evaluated at x is equal to L. So, instead of x I am putting L here everywhere and the right hand side I am getting alpha gamma to the power 4 L into this is what is phi that we have found after finding a relation between two constants a1 and a3 and a2 and a4. So, you can see phi 3 uh, lambda to the power cube is can be divided with this lambda to the power 4 and the result becomes lambda L. So, ultimately we are getting this a1 sin hyperbolic lambda L minus sin lambda L plus a2 cos hyperbolic lambda L plus cos lambda L equal to alpha lambda L into a1 cos hyperbolic lambda L minus cos lambda L plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda L minus sin lambda L and bracket close. So, this is the equation. So, after writing this bringing this uh, a1 this term in the left hand side as well as this term in the left hand side. So, that we can get the terms whose coefficient is a1. The coefficient of this term is a1. Similarly, we get an expression with uh, lambda L cosine lambda L uh, cos hyperbolic lambda L cos lambda L that should form the frequency equation. So, here also this this coefficient or coefficient of this term that I have encircled is A2. So, we are getting the equation in this form from the first equation that is by applying the uh, 0 condition at the fixed end and finding the relation between a1 and a3 and a2 and a4. Now, we are getting the two constants of integration. So, that is one equation and then second equation is obtained by applying the, the boundary condition at the free end where the concentrated mass was placed. So, two equation now have to be solved for this lambda L. Now, this is a homogeneous equation and for non-trivial solution determinant of the coefficient of the matrix that is formed by this uh, matrix of this coefficients should be equated to the 0. So, that means if I write a matrix say matrix is F1 is a function of lambda L, F2 is a function of lambda L, then F3 is another function of lambda L, F3 is another function of lambda L multiplied by this vector A1 and A2 and this is equal to 0. What is F1 lambda L? F1 lambda L is this. What is F2 lambda L? F2 lambda L is this. and F3 lambda L will now span up to this. This is F3 lambda L and F4 lambda L is this cos hyperbolic lambda L plus cos lambda L minus alpha lambda L into sin hyperbolic lambda L minus sin lambda L equal to 0. So, for non-trivial solution determinant of this matrix f1 lambda l, f2 lambda l and then f3 lambda l, f4 lambda l 
should be equated to 0 ok. So, after expanding the determinant we get the frequency equation ok. Now, a book on this formula for structural dynamics there the expression of this expansion is given as 1 by alpha equal to lambda l into sin lambda l cos hyperbolic lambda l minus sin hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l divided by 1 plus cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l. This is the frequency equation for the cantilever beam subjected to a concentrated mass at the free end that is the tip and if beam mass is m then and length is l then this ratio alpha is m divided by ml. So, that is the most important parameter that will play a role in the frequency equation of this uh, nature. Now, here for example, if alpha is 0, for example, alpha is 0, then this will be unbounded infinity. So, in that case, this the right hand side, the denominator has to be 0. if alpha is 0. If alpha is 0 that means this whole term will be infinity right hand side this infinity. So, therefore, alpha 0 means 1 plus cos hyperbolic lambda l into cos lambda l is equal to 0 and this is the equation that we have already known for cantilever beam. So, when m is 0 then the beam is a clamp free beam that is a cantilever beam. So, therefore, this is the frequency equation for cantilever beam ok. Now, another extreme case when alpha is infinity if alpha tends to infinity ok the mass is very high mass is very high concentrated mass is very high in comparison in comparison to total mass of the beam. Amen. So, that means if this is high that this alpha tends to infinity ok. So, in that case you will get uh, equation that will uh, give a equation for the beam which is fixed at one end and supported on the other end. So, that type of beam is known as your prop cantilever. Of course, if this is alpha equal to infinity that is possible that means this term will be 0. In that case this is will be 0 if alpha is infinity. So, in that case the numerator that equation that you get sin lambda l cos hyperbolic lambda l minus sin hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l equal to 0. So, that means it will have a equation like that tan lambda l equal to tan hyperbolic lambda l and this type of equation characteristic equation is seen in case of beam where the one end is one end is your this pin or supported and other end is fixed ok. So, that type of beam is called prop cantilever, prop cantilever. Now, let us come to the several cases where the results are obtained or taken from this reference this uh, Karnov sky and left formulas for structural dynamics McGraw Hill publication and it was published in 2000. You can see what is the effect of concentrated mass on the first two natural frequencies of the beam. So, first frequency that you can see 1.875 that is without zero mass. So, if mass is zero that means then it is a simple cantilever. So, let us show this beam then you will be able to understand it and here mass is attached and length of the beam is L. 
so this alpha that here it is alpha the mass ratio alpha is m by ml so a plot of the first natural frequency that is related to lambda l is obtained here with different alpha that is taken from the reference okay so at zero alpha that is no mass is present here so it is like a cantilever and we are familiar with the first root of cantilever that i have told you in the uh, earlier class 1.875 and you can see the trend of the curve as the mass increases then natural frequency reduces in the first mode that is seen because you can see from the very crude approximation if you do for a cantilever beam or any structure as a single degree freedom system the first natural frequency is root over k by m that is the frequency of the uh, single degree freedom system any system can be idealized as a single degree freedom system crude approximation so in that case the physical interpretation is that if the mass increases that means the frequency reduces and if the structure becoming stiffer and stiffer that uh, the frequency will increase now here you can see with the increase of mass concentrated mass that is alpha the frequency decreases and ultimately when m is very large that is alpha tends to infinity then you will get not much change in the frequency in the second frequency also you can see at zero uh, ratio alpha zero is the where no mass is present so here the second frequency factor is 4.694 that we have already obtained and first frequency factor is 1.875 and as the concentrated mass increases the natural frequency decreases that you can see from this curve okay now let us discuss another condition that is beam fixed at one end and supported by linear spring at the other end so here you can see that uh, if this end is fixed and this end is supported by linear spring and here also we define a non dimensional parameter that is the relative stiffness relative stiffness that parameter is defined as this k is the stiffness of this divided by a stiffness parameter for the beam ei by l cube of course some factor will be there but we are taking this parameter so that we can take a non dimensional relative stiffness factor so k l cube by ei is a non dimensional stiffness factor so that is the relative stiffness we will use this in the formulation to interpret the results now here you can see the model solution that uh, what you get the mode shape is nothing but phi x equal to a1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a3 cos lambda x plus a4 sin lambda x now apply the boundary condition let us see what will be the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 that is again the fixed end boundary condition deflection and slope are 0 but at the end x is equal to l you can see a spring is attached a linear spring is attached so therefore in that case the boundary condition will be different here not as free boundary condition here actually boundary condition one condition is bending moment equal to at x is equal to 0 will be 0 but the shear force at this end will be equal to the spring force so that we have to take into account okay now from the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 two equations are obtained as usual a1 plus a3 equal to 0 a1 minus a3 equal to 0 that gives a1 equal to minus a3 
and the slope boundary condition at the fixed end gives A2 equal to minus A4 because here you can see after obtaining first derivative if you substitute x is equal to 0 you will get A2 plus A4 equal to 0 that certainly give A2 equal to minus A4. So, we can now write this phi x in terms of two constants only A1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus A2 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x ok. So, that now reduces to a equation with two constants ok. Now, you have to apply this condition bending moment condition and shear condition ok. We already obtained the first as second and third derivative. So, second derivative is this a1 lambda square cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x plus a2 lambda square sin hyperbolic lambda x plus sin lambda x and third derivative is lambda cube a1 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x plus lambda cube a2 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus cos lambda x. Let us apply the other boundary condition that is the bending moment boundary condition if I apply this then it gives this a1 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l plus a2 sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l that is coming from this equation. So, this equation if you substitute x is equal to l and then equate to 0 you will be getting this equation ok. Now, apply the third equation what is the uh, fourth equation fourth equation is your this shear at the end where the spring is attached is equal to minus k y x is equal to l that will give you e i phi triple prime l is equal to minus k phi l ok. So, after evaluating this third derivative that we have obtained here and here phi is there we can now form the second equation. So, second equation will be E i lambda cube a 1 sin hyperbolic lambda l that you can see here directly I have written from this ok. So, sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus a 2 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l. So, uh, this equation and the right hand side is minus k phi l. So, minus k and this is uh, phi we already obtained earlier. So, phi we obtain a 1 cos hyperbolic lambda x minus cos lambda x plus a 2 sin hyperbolic lambda x minus sin lambda x. So, this equation is applied here ok with the substitution of x is equal to l. So, we are now getting one equation here this is one equation say equation Roman i and this is 2. So, these two equation have to be solved for frequency to obtain the frequency characteristic equation for determining natural frequency. So, after some arrangement we are now writing like that a 1 sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus a 2 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l equal to minus k divided by e i lambda cube into a 1 cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l plus a 2 sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l and bracket closed ok. This again I have written in this way. Uh, e i by l cube and I have put here lambda l cube ok. Uh, so, that I can introduce the non dimensional stiffness parameter. So, stiffness ratio gamma is now taken here and you can see in both the equation gamma will appear. So, a 1 sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus gamma lambda l cube 
cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l plus a2 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l plus uh, that will be a equation for a2 here the constant this is the equation for constant a2 and this is the equation for constant a1 so gamma by lambda l cube into sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l so we have earlier got one equation uh, for bending moment now we are getting one equation for shear force equating shear force to the spring force so the frequency determinant can be formed so just like uh, two equations are obtained this is one equation and that is another equation so in this equation the coefficient of a1 you are seeing cos uh, hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l coefficient of a2 you are seeing here sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l in this equation coefficient of a1 you are seeing sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l plus gamma lambda l cube plus cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l and bracket closed and then a2 cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l plus gamma divided by lambda l cube into sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l and bracket closed equal to 0. So we obtain the homogeneous algebraic equation f is a matrix and this a is a vector which contains the two unknown constants a1 and a2. So for non-trivial solution we now uh, take the determinant of this equation to be 0. So f1 lambda l is the element of the first row first column of the determinant and then similarly the f2 lambda l is the element of the first row and second column this is the element of the f3 lambda l is the element of the second row first column and f4 lambda l is the element of the second row second column and these are automatically found from this equation if you see this equation say this is f1 lambda l so f1 lambda l is cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l so we have written therefore all the uh, functions can be written isolating the coefficients associated with a1 a2 a1 and a2 in both the equations so after expanding the determinant you will get the characteristic roots characteristic equation and solving which we get the lambda l now two special cases let us examine okay what are the two special cases in one case this uh, frequency parameter that we are defining as lambda is equal to k l cube divided by e i in one case the k is 0 or very small so in that case gamma is 0 that is one case another case may be arise may arise when k is infinity very large k is very large so in that case gamma tends to infinity okay k is infinity means the spring is very uh, stiff okay so two extreme cases we can examine and we can arrive at the known results so if we take k is equal to 0 then gamma is 0 so that our frequency determinant becomes cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l plus cos lambda l and this determinant is equated to 0 after expansion of determinant we get this equation 1 plus cos hyperbolic lambda l cos lambda l and this is nothing but the frequency equation of a cantilever so when k is 0 that means no spring is attached so this represents k 0 case no spring is attached so this is nothing but a cantilever a pure cantilever so that we get now when gamma is infinity when gamma is infinity we slightly rearrange the equation in this form means we divide both sides by gamma of this equation and uh, two equations 
both sides we are dividing by gamma. So, we are getting this a1 1 by gamma sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l and this side 1 by lambda l cube. So, here gamma was there we are dividing both sides of the second equation by gamma. So, also the second term of this equation you are getting a2 into 1 by gamma into cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l plus 1 by lambda l cube sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l equal to 0. Okay. Now, you can interpret now if gamma is infinity that is very high. So, this term will be 0. So, ultimately if this is 0 then we are getting with this equation cos hyperbolic lambda l plus cos lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l plus sin lambda l cos hyperbolic lambda l minus cos lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l minus sin lambda l equal to 0. After expansion you can get some terms will get cancelled ok and then ultimately you will obtain an equation from here you can see very minutely this is the expanded determinant. So, this term will get cancelled cos hyperbolic lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l will get cancelled and sin lambda l cos lambda l will get cancelled. So, ultimately you are getting cos lambda l sin hyperbolic lambda l equal to sin lambda l cos hyperbolic lambda l and this is nothing but tan hyperbolic lambda l and tan equal to tan lambda l and we have seen in earlier cases when mass is very high that means this support is reduced to a rigid support. So, here also if the spring is very high then support will not deflect and it will act as a pin support. So, therefore, this characteristic equation is same as the beam fixed at x is equal to 0 and hinged at x is equal to L such type of beam is known as prop cantilever. Okay. Now, let us consider the damp free vibration analysis of the beam. The governing differential equation of the motion of the Euler Bernoulli beam is written as E i del 4 y by del x 4 plus c del y by del t plus m del square y by del t square equal to 0. Now, let y x t that is the displacement at location x at time instant t is equal to phi a i x eta i t that is the summation of mode that we considered earlier to represent the total response. So, phi i x into eta i t and this quantity is summed over for different modes and theoretically the number of modes are infinity. So, we are taking i is equal to 1 to infinity. So, that is nothing but phi 1 eta 1 plus phi 2 eta 2 plus phi 3 eta 3 like that it will extend up to infinity. Now, substituting this in the differential equation we now write this E i and using this condition that uh, E i d square phi d x to the power 4 equal to m omega square phi. So, that condition we will use later on. Now, first let us substitute this. When I substitute this space derivative is taken here. So, d 4 phi this now becomes ordinary differential coefficient uh, d 4 phi i by d x to the power 4 eta i t and here c due to damping coefficient per unit length c phi i eta dot t plus m phi i eta double dot i t equal to 0. Now, we have to use this equation as well as orthogonality condition. So, multiply both sides by phi j x and integrate in the domain of the beam. So, if I carry out this process that uh, both sides of the equation are multiplied by another mode shape. First, we are acting with this mode shape at the ith mode. Now, we are operating it with the mode shape at jth mode. i and j are two different modes number. So, here after multiplying this equation by phi j x and then carry out integration using the following conditions, following results. One result is this 
okay this is one result very vital result when you assume that free vibration is harmonic and then another result that orthogonality condition of the modes they also the normalized modes with the respect of mass so we are getting this konecker delta delta r i j is the konecker delta so that means this equation the result of this integral is 1 when this i is equal to j and it is 0 when i is equal to not j and also assuming that mass proportional damping c by m equal to 2 gamma j into omega i gamma j is the damping ratio at the ith mode so after using these results and carrying out the integration because many terms will get cancelled only the terms involving i is equal to j will exist so therefore we are getting a decoupled equation like a ordinary differential equation so we are getting that eta i double dot t plus 2 j i omega i eta dot t plus omega i square eta i t equal to 0 so that is the equation for free vibration of the beam in generalized coordinates and this represents a equation similar to damped free vibration equation of a single degree freedom system. The solution of this equation is well known. So we can write eta i t equal to e to the power minus j i omega i t into a i cos omega d t plus b i sin omega d t where omega d t is the damped frequency. So damped frequency in any mode ith mode. So omega d i you should remember this it is nothing but omega i is the undamped natural frequency equal to 1 minus j i square where j i is the damping ratio for small damping ratio you can get omega d i is approximately equal to omega i now we write the response y x t as the summation of phi x into eta i t so eta i t is substituted from here you can see the whole expression is substituted and it is written phi i x into e to the power j i omega i t into a i cos omega d i t plus b i sin omega d i t and bracket closed and the here summation also extends from 1 to infinity. So to apply the initial conditions to obtain the free vibration response we again differentiate this quantity this expression with respect to time so y dot represent the differentiation of this expression with respect to time so after differentiating this remain as a constant so here we are differentiating first this term so minus j i omega i is coming and then e to the power minus j i omega i t will be there and this will remain as it is then we will differentiate this term this term will differentiate so after differentiating this this will remain as it is and we are getting minus a i omega d i sin omega d i t plus b i omega d i cos omega d i t so this is the expression for velocity because initial conditions have to be obtained for displacement as well as velocity okay so let us take an example of simply supported beam whose mode shape function normalized with respect to mass is given by uh, root over 2 by ml nth mode in sin n pi x by m and let us take the displacement shape at t is equal to 0 is a naught sin pi x by l and velocity is 0 so our question is we have to obtain the expression for y x t so now uh, the displacement expression we already obtained so we substitute t is equal to 0 in the displacement expression we are getting summation phi i x a i equal to a naught sin pi x by l again substitute t is equal to 0 in the velocity expression that we have obtained earlier you can see in this expression if you substitute t is equal to 0 we are getting phi i x will remain as it is and uh, this minus j i i omega i a i will be there and uh, here again e to the power minus 
0 that is e to the power 0 will be 1 and here this term will be 0 because sin 0 is 0 and therefore only this term will remain b i omega d i and equal to 0. So, we are getting two equation which have to be solved for a i and b i. Okay. Now, from first equation the displacement shape is given in the second equation that is coming from velocity the time differentiation of the uh, displacement equation and velocity for this problem initial velocity is 0. So, multiply both sides of the equation by m phi j x and then integrate using orthogonality condition. Why I have taken a m so that we can use the mass normalized uh, orthogonality condition that we have already written m phi i x phi j x dx equal to Kronecker delta i j integration 0 to l. So, if i is equal to j then integration this integration i will be 1 and if i equal to not j then i is 0. Therefore, our intention is to multiply by m j x so that we can directly get this orthogonality equation in both sides. So, we get a i equal to a naught and b i equal to j i i omega i a naught divided by omega d i. Okay. Now, for small damping, for small damping ratio, this factor 1 by j i i square is approximately equal to 1 because this is very small so square of this again will be small so approximately 1. So, this factor omega i by omega d i is approximately taken as 1. So, for small damping we can write d i equal to j i i into a naught because this factor can be approximated as 1 for small damping. So, therefore, the response is obtained finally as y x t equal to summation phi i x into e to the power minus j i i omega i t into a naught cos omega d i t plus j i a naught divided by root over 1 minus j i i square sin omega d i t. Okay. So, this is the free vibration response of the uh, Euler Bernoulli beam subjected to the initial condition a naught sin pi x by L and initial velocity is 0. So, let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, first we have discussed about the eigenvalue problem of Euler Bernoulli beam with two non classical boundary conditions. One is cantilever carrying a concentrated mass at the tip and the next one is a beam fixed at one end and supported by linear spring at the other end. And secondly, we have derived the expression for damp free vibration response of Euler Bernoulli beam subjected to initial condition y x comma 0 and dy x comma 0 by del t del y by del x comma 0 del t that is the velocity equal to 0. So, two initial conditions that are applied to obtain the complete free vibration response. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.